and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be making this mini ornament as a part of our mini makes crochet along. It is being hosted by Clover and I and you can find the free patterns on their blog or on Instagram and I'll link that in the description below. Let's go ahead and begin. This is a really great scrap project and it's going to take us about 45 minutes. I might be a little slower or faster. I'm not sure. We'll see um, since I am filming this tutorial. Um, so you're just going to need some light gray yarn and some tomato colored red yarn. Here I'm using Hobie Friends Cotton 8.8. Um, you can use whatever yarn you have on hand. I'm also using Clover Amora Hook in 2.75. This is like my go-to hook. I use it for everything. As for size, this is a standard ornament and so you can see it is quite a lot smaller and that's what's so fun about it. it it's super quick to whip up. Um, I went ahead and I made one with like my chunky yarn that I had. I had some leftover Juicy Couture yarn from my bat tutorial and I just love how it came out. Same amount of time, same number of stitches used here, but you could see um, what a drastic difference it is just to change up your materials and corresponding hook size. So we're going to make the silver or the gray part of the ornament first. Let's make a magic circle and single crochet six times into it. I'm going to be using yarn under. So I put yarn under when I pull through the first loop and I yarn under when I pull through both loops. This is going to create X shaped stitches, which just makes a more compact um, neater look in my opinion and you don't have to like wrangle the yarn as hard to make ni nice tight stitches so double checking I have six stitches I'm gonna pull that loop closed and to join the round closed we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch so I'm gonna pull that through Wow something just fell in the bathroom sorry <laughs> Round two, we're going to chain one, and this whole round is worked in the back loops only. This chain one counts as the first stitch. So we're going to single crochet all around, which means we're going to go into the next stitch over. Back loop only. And go all the way around. This is our third one. fifth and our sixth one and this is going to create a really nice edge for that metal silver part of our piece now when we slip stitch to join the round which is going to be in this stitch right here we're going to do so in tomato colored yarn so let me go ahead and grab my red yarn I'm going to create a little slip knot for added reinforcement. And we're just going to pull that through. Okay. All right. And now we are ready to proceed to round three, which the rest of the pattern is worked in a spiral now. So in the back loops only, round three says to loosely slip stitch around. So in the back loops only, I'm going to slip stitch. Keep your tension very loose here. And this is a technique used to make the color changes a bit smoother. So rather than a zigzag line, this is gonna help create a really clean line. Another way you could do it is create a ball and then single crochet this top part or crochet this top part separately but then there's sewing involved and we're making this as easy as possible for you okay okie dokie now i've slip stitched all the way around five six and then round four in the back loops only again we're going to increase all around so from here I make sure I'm in the frame. Make one increase. And make another increase. Our 
third increase. Ooh, gotta wedge myself in there. That's part of the reason why you may want to make sure you loosely slip stitch. Fourth. This is our fifth increase. And our sixth increase. So let's double check our stitch count here. I want to make sure I have 12. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Great. And now what I'm going to do is use a scrap piece of yarn as a stitch marker. You can use whatever you have on hand. And then round five says single crochet increase all around. We're going to bring our stitch count up to 18. Okay. So this is going to be in both loops. You're just going to single crochet regularly now. Okay, so there's one single crochet and then increase, single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, Single crochet, increase, then single crochet and increase. Okay, I'm actually going to switch this stitch marker out because I think it's a little too fluffy. It's kind of obscuring our view, if you will. <laughs> The next step says to remove your hook and place a stitch marker in the current loop. You can try to do that without throwing it across the table like I did. And this is just gonna make sure that our loop doesn't come undone as we work this next step. So using the light gray yarn from the magic circle, we're gonna pull up a loop from the wrong side to the right side, and that's gonna create a little loop on the very top of our bubble. So this is the yarn tail that we wanna use. And then I'm going to insert my hook into the center of the top. And let's just pull this up like so. Oops, and I don't want my yarn to separate here. And I'm just pulling it up a tiny little bit to create that loop. And now I'm going to tie my yarn tails on the bottom to secure that loop in place. And I'm just going to use both of the gray yarn tails and make sure that you don't tug it too tight. All right. For extra security, you can add a little fabric glue if you have it on hand. And here, this is like my favorite brand of fabric glue to use, UHU. Um, so the knot is in there and I'm just going to coat it like so. Hot glue also works. We'll just let that dry for a bit. All right, and now we have our little loop and it's gonna look like that. So we are ready to proceed. So I'm gonna insert my hook back into the loop and I grabbed a new stitch marker. We're just using white instead now. It should make it easier to see our stitches. So round six, we're going to single crochet, increase, and then single crochet again, a total of six times to bring our stitch count up to 24. So single crochet, increase, and single crochet. And we'll do that sequence six times. You can also think of it as two single crochet increase, um, and the reason why I split the two into like a single crochet and then put the increase in between is so that the increases are more spread out and that'll create a rounder shape for your amigurumi rather than like a hexagonal one. That's what happens when you stack your increases on top of each other. So as you can see, like they're a little bit staggered this way. This is our increase from the previous round and this is our increase. It's like slightly before it. <clears throat> All right, increase, 
single crochet, single crochet, increase, single crochet, single crochet, increase, oops, and we have one more single crochet to finish this round. Now we have 24 stitches. Rounds seven through 10 are simply to single crochet all around, which is the fun part. We can kind of like tune out for a bit. And so every single time I start a new round, I'm just gonna wrap my stitch marker the other way. That'll help keep track of how many rounds I have done. So pause the video and meet me back here when you are finished. Welcome back. We just completed round 10 and we can see that our bobble is forming nicely. Round 11, we're going to single crochet, decrease, single crochet, do that sequence six times and bring our stitch count down to 18. Single crochet, decrease, single crochet, 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 single crochet, decrease, oh, a little fluffy there. And single crochet, single crochet, decrease, single crochet. We now have 18 stitches. Now round 12, we're gonna single crochet, decrease six times, go from 18 stitches to 12. Single crochet, decrease, single crochet. Decrease, single crochet, decrease. Ooh, one important thing I should note is when I do an indivisible decrease, even when I'm using the yarn under method, I actually yarn over for the invisible decrease. I should have noted that earlier. So I actually yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. The reason being, um, through a lot of trial and error, I've noticed that when I yarn under for my de decreases, like it becomes very boxy. So it's really all preference, what comes more naturally to you. Um, don't worry about doing it right or wrong. This is such an easy, stress-free project. Okay, so now at this point, we're going to tuck our little yarn tails in here and stuff our bobble. And what's nice is you can actually use any scraps of yarn you have as stuffing. This is a great way to repurpose them. Okay. And you can either use the back of your hook to push it in, or I like to use my tweezers personally. Now I used, I used to use my scissors to do this, but I had one really bad accident recently. Um, I sliced right through my project and then I had to like undo like four or five rounds and like fix it because it wasn't able to be salvaged. So yeah, never doing that again. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna overstuff it because we're gonna stuff it one last time before we close. Round 13, decrease all around. So we're gonna go from 12 stitches to six. One, decrease. Two. Three. Four. Make sure that you're keeping your tension tight too when you're working these decreases. Otherwise, the bottom of your ornament slash bobble will be gappy. Five, and this is our last one, six. Okay, 
I'm gonna pull out my scrap yarn stitch marker here. So easy. And then I'm gonna stuff it inside of here, because why not? <laughs> stuff your piece one last time. Just grabbing a little bit at a time. Kind of moving it around too to make sure that it's evenly filled out. Rotate and shove it in a new little area. <laughs> All right, I think that's pretty good. Okay, and now we can cut our yarn. And we're ready to sew up this bottom part. I'm gonna use my clover darning needle and weave in my yarn tail. And we're gonna sew up the opening going through the front loops only. So that's gonna look like this right here. You can see the front loop here and then the back loop behind it. And I'm gonna start in the current loop that we're in. I really like the bent tip and how pointy it is. Um, it really beats the plastic needles that just like bend because you want something with structure to get into the nitty gritty tight spaces when you're working with amigurumi. This is held up pretty good. Um, I've used this one for years and you can see that only a little chunk of the paint kind of came off and that's because I used pliers. <laughs> I was like really getting into something, something there and yeah. <laughs> I've never broken one of these two. I've seen people like break their hooks all the time and, and their needles, I'm like, oh my goodness, they're going Hulk mode. Okay, bury that tail around a few times before cutting off the excess. Okay, and there we have it. So easy and quick. So now we're gonna embroider some sparkles and stars on it. Okay, so I thought it'd be kind of fun to use some gold embroidery thread instead. Make it a matching pair, but just a little different. So I'm gonna cut about um, a foot and a half or so. And it doesn't really matter, you can always add more. And I'm going to thread my needle. And when I go out from maybe like one opposite side, and make the front line four rounds tall. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna go out this way and we're gonna leave about a three inch tail so that we can tie it all at the end. Okay, and now to do the line going the opposite way, I'm gonna go out two stitches to the left and then this is also gonna be four stitches wide. I'm gonna come out to where the diagonal line is gonna be made. Tug that tight, whoops. Okay, you don't wanna to tug too tight because then the embroidery thread will kind of be uneven. Then we're gonna go diagonal just like this, two stitches across, across, and then go to where my other diagonal line will be and then finish that up by going across two stitches as well. Then I'm gonna come out somewhere random next to it and just start on creating my little X's wherever I want. And I try to alternate the height and the position of where I put these. Oh, you see this is bunching up weird, so I'm just gonna loosen it and then re-pull it down. It's a good lesson. <laughs> and again, maybe another one right here. Yeah, I like that. Then I'm gonna create another big X on the side. We're gonna have three big X's total. Of course, you can modify that part however you see fit. So again, four rounds tall. So one, two, three, and four. We're gonna end it right there and then come out to the side. So one, two, over to the left. Again, 
skin if it's bunching up because this embroidery floss separates so easily. It's meant for, it's meant to do that. Just go ahead and carefully go over again. I think I have to go one more actually. Count four stitches across and then pull on that to make it more even. Okay, then we're going to make our diagonal lines. So we'll go in here, come out here. Oh, this is really tightening on me, or this is like loosening up on me. If you guys have any tips with how to work with this kind of embroidery floss, please fire away. Because other than using it to embellish my amigurumi, I don't really embroider, but I think it'd be a great skill to have. Especially when it comes to making like, what are those called? Um, French knots. French knots are, will have the death of me. <laughs> No matter what, no matter what tutorials I've watched, I just cannot figure them out. So I'm going to finish up putting my random little X's and my last large star and go ahead and pause the video and meet me back when you are finished. Welcome back. So I'm about to finish my last little X embroidered detail and I'm going to come back out where I left my tail. So now that we are in the same hole, this is where I'm going to tie a double knot to keep everything secure. All right. And we can trim away a little bit of that excess before I use my tweezers to kind of tuck the rest into the ornament. Just gonna boop, shove it in there. And I seriously love these tweezers. I use them for everything. They really like have upped my amigurumi game because now that I'm able to make smaller and more intricate details, it really raises the value of my pieces. And now, if I'm looking at my ornament, I am going to look for uneven areas and just tug on it ever so slightly with the tweezers. And this will just help shape it up a little bit. Like here, you see this bottom one is kind of like tight. Okay. And there we have it. We are finished with our mini ornament. Thank you so much for crocheting along with me. And I hope to see all of your mini makes on Instagram. Be sure to tag Clover and myself with our hashtags. And I think I'm going to make these into a pair of earrings. Let me know which one you like better, gold or silver. Stay tuned for the second pattern, which will be released in a few days. Uh, you can find the full schedule on the Cal details, which I will link in the description as well.